Well, it's certainly been a very interesting morning at Power and Electricity World Africa. We started the session on day number two, having a look at utilities and what is required to be changed over the coming year as well as the next decade in order to serve the African population uh, that are suffering from energy poverty. My name is Gareth Gregory and I'm absolutely honoured uh, to have EDM with me here today from uh, Mozambique. And I welcome on my direct left hand side uh, Mr. Alberto uh, Banze. Welcome. Uh, he's very actively involved in distribution in EDM and uh, by no means lost uh, Mr. Jen Benjamin Fernandez, who's very actively involved on the commercial side in Mozambique. And gentlemen, we're going to get straight into it because this is quite a contentious and commonly spoken uh, topic is how are utilities of the future going to be changing and going to be adapting? And we understand that distributed and decentralized energy is going to be absolutely paramount in uh, serving the population of Africa, not in years to come, but in decades and centuries to come as well. So I think, let me, let me open up the question, uh, what are we doing from a distribution standpoint and what do you think is going to change uh, to meet this distributed energy or decentralized environment if you think that that is what is required? Okay, thank you. First, I apologize for my poor English. I'm speaking Portuguese, but I'll try to respond to your questions. Your, your English is perfect, thank you. Uh, when we think uh, that we will decentralize the distribution, well, uh, EDM is a national company, but uh, I can say we are not uh, say that uh, Another supplies can come to the DM. We are open to uh, work with the partnership, but the problem now uh, we have a national grid. That grid belongs to government, and the EDM, it's a company belongs to government who, who deals with the customers. But uh, now um, we have a challenge to electrify all the country or to distribute energy for the all people in 2030. And we think that we need the help with the, how I can say, off-grid systems. And the off-grid system, it's not the business for EDM now. And I think it's the mean for the decentralizing who can help us working in the of grid systems. Yeah. Alberto, mm -hmm. I need to ask you a very direct question. Mm -hmm. right, it's very fine on the one side that uh, you've got an infrastructure mm -hmm. that's really controlled politically, if I can be as, mm -hmm. as blatant as that. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is not every person in uh, Mozambique is currently electrified. So I guess you've got a discussion around the existing infrastructure, yeah. but you've got to meet many, many people in the terms of the mitigation of energy poverty. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to do that? Because then it stops becoming an existing infrastructure consideration. Mm -hmm. It starts becoming a consideration mm -hmm. as to what the future entails and mm -hmm. how you should be changing your thinking mm -hmm. from a distribution standpoint. Yeah, I think the way it's the decentralizing, that is the way. We saw too many countries, see, even in South Africa, Portugal, uh, they are centralized, they decentralized the, the distribution. But uh, when you go through for your question, then Mozambique will have uh, big issues. The price which we are uh, selling energy for our customers. Uh, in the average, the amount which we use to buy is higher than which we sell for our customers. But that's, but mm. that's, that's mm. the challenges of a traditional utility mm. system and it's something mm. that needs to change, yeah. right, in order to uh, mm. correct and try and curb some mm. of those challenges. Mm. I think let's uh, focus our attention now on the uh, commercial side. Yeah. And uh, Benjamin, mm. uh, I just need to confirm, mm. commercially, I mean, one of the million dollar questions here this morning is that you vertically integrated, mm. right? Do you believe that that is going to survive? Because I know for a fact that ESCOM, which is a South African state utility, is on relatively rocky ground now. And, um, and I would say maybe as soon as 24, 36 months, maybe a little bit longer, uh, we may have some very significant changes around the state-owned utility in the form of unbundling. Um, where does this leave EDM? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, this is a very important question. 
but uh, the, the fundamental point here is the lack of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Mozambique is a very long country. We have uh, more than 3,000 kilometers of coast, coastline, sure. and uh, we don't have a backbone infrastructure. You know? The main source of uh, power is in the, the center of the country, but it's the Kaora Basin. But Kaora Basin, in fact, is the big dam there. Yes. And uh, to supply the power to, uh, throughout the, the, the country without a uh, very strong backbone transmission uh, is uh, very difficult. I think that uh, we will see a huge change after huge investment on the infrastructure. Job. Yeah. Because you almost get to a saturation point uh, where you've almost got to um, acknowledge yourself, and I, and I believe you have already, that it's going to be very difficult moving forward under the current structure and uh, considering what's happening in distributed energy and the positive opportunities around international investment uh, provided the fundamentals are in place in Mozambique to try and de-risk the transaction as far as possible, um, you, you've got to sit back sometime and say it's time for change and I'm sure that's, that discussion is already taking place in your boardroom, but how do we get the political discussion heading in the same, the same direction? Uh, I think that uh, the law for electricity in Mozambique is very uh, open the market. The market is open for mm -hmm. any partner who want to invest. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, without a uh, huge investment mm -hmm. on the infrastructure, it's uh, very difficult for any investor to come and to do a business in Mozambique. Because you need first to invest on the backbone, have a huge infrastructure. Because we, are, we don't have uh, a backbone, we don't have a uh, huge investment. Sure, but without it, that, it's uh, very difficult. But isn't distributed energy mm. your ultimate uh, golden bullet, if I can call it that, right, uh, to actually resolve these issues? Right, so if you have a strategy around distributed energy and you implement it, mm. um, the existing backbone, if I understood you correctly, you need the backbone to create the investment. Well. It could work slightly differently as well. You could take a very positive and very proactive stance in uh, creating this decentralized energy generation market, possibly in the terms of microgrids, uh, where you can serve outlying areas and you can start getting that portion of the population active in the economy. Uh, is that is not, is that not the not the true step that needs that needs to be taken here? Yeah, and the acknowledgement it's almost the chicken or the egg. You know what is what is going to what is going to come mm. first, yeah. but you need to do something. Yeah. You know, I agree with you. Uh, what we are looking for in Mozambique is different type of solutions. In fact, we are moving to um, very decentralized uh, generation. We are investing now on solar plant in different places of Mozambique. How many megawatts? Uh, now we are talking about Mukuba, the solar mm -hmm. plant is a 40 uh, megawatt. 40? Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, Metur, mm -hmm. more 40, mm -hmm. 20 megawatt. Mm -hmm. And we are also see some uh, investment on the uh, small project of, uh, because we have uh, uh, a department for the government mm -hmm. called FUNAI. They invest on renewable energy in a very uh, remote area. Very good. Now, something that Egypt has done very well is the expediting or the speeding up of the process to get um, the businesses involved in generating power, right? So they've done mm -hmm. everything that they could possibly do uh, to try and make the process as easy and as quick as possible and, of course, not creating risk for the broader infrastructure, which you would understand backwards, right? But in but in principle, um, do you feel you're doing enough and quick enough? And is there um, is there real sentiment from government to actually have these decentralised programs develop further? And is EDM saying they sitting there and saying this is our future, or is it merely a a a marketing approach that says we are doing something around distributed, we're doing something about renewable energy? But I think we're just going to carry on as we are. What are your What are your thoughts on that, Alberto? Okay, uh, let me go back a little bit. Uh, now in the generation, we have independent producers who are producing and supply 
to EDM and EDM distribute for the population. We have, uh, I think, three companies. We have there Gigawatt, we have Pandankua, we have uh, uh, Cap Power in Nakala, north of Mozambique, and we have uh, uh, Agreco. It's mm -hmm. another company produced there, Adreco, and we have uh, Cetergy, it's a partnership, EDM and Sazor, and also we are busy developing another plant in Teman. Yeah, now we are in feasibility study with EDM and Sazor. That's some examples that uh, we are accepting the independent producers, and uh, we need more, even the distribution. It seems what my colleagues say. The law is open and accept uh, another stakeholders to help EDM distribute energy. But uh, the point is, uh, in person, uh, we have a small, we have a village called the Vilankulush, a big beach there, uh, and it was private uh, uh, utility were there in, in the past. But uh, there were too much problems because the price, yeah, EDM is uh, selling in average at eight centimes USD per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. And there in the Villain Pools, it was uh, around 20. But this is where your regulator comes in? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, comes for regulator, but it's not strong regulator now. I think that price it was the agreement with uh, the utility and the government. Maybe I don't sure how it was. Uh, the, the deal was yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, the people was complaining too much. The price here in Vilanko is around the twenty, but in Nyamba and Maputo, there around here, it's so very cheap. Hmm? That in principle shouldn't be a negative factor mm. to stop uh, or to slow down distributed energy, yeah. right? What you've got to do there, surely, and maybe I should get, get back to the commercial side now, uh, you should have sufficient regulation, not regulation that is put in place before you understand where the market is heading, but it sounds like you've got enough projects that are starting to, starting to materialize now to put some good and informed regulation in place. Why is that not happening? Yeah, in fact, uh, the government is uh, putting a new structure, a new body for, to regulate the sector. Because, uh, in fact, this is a very important. You need to have a very strong regulation to drive the market. Otherwise, it's difficult for any investor to put money how, there. How long will it take? Uh, as far as I know, uh, this year, the new body will start working mm -hmm. with the full all the full structure and they will appoint yes they will appoint yeah. all departments they will recruit people because this is a process mm -hmm. you know? of they need to build a very strong mm -hmm. regulator mm -hmm. and uh, to drive but do you believe it's going to be a consultative process or would you believe that it will be a politically fueled process as opposed to an open market until now the government is is very open and is taking uh, comments for several uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, it will uh, have the contribution of uh, all uh, uh, stakeholders. So it will overflow into the regulatory side? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Very good. Let me Please. Uh, comment on this. Yeah, we, we also I believe that uh, when the regulator works properly, I think the even for EDM, it will so very easy for us to discuss with the regulator about the price. Because now, oh, what I'm saying before, the cost uh, which we are buying is so high and we are selling it down. Yeah, the regulator, he will decide, you know, uh, the business, you have to do this and that and the price, it will be like that. It will be good for EDM also. Of course, yeah, yeah. of course, because it yeah. gives you some mm -hmm. form of security and mm -hmm. continuity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So in, so in closing this morning, on the second day of Power and Electricity World Africa, there's a lot happening, there's a lot of discussion taking place, etc. Uh, what recommendation would you like to give to other African geographies, and it could be South Africa as well, as to what needs to happen and happen next, what needs to happen in the next one, two, three years? 
or possibly in the next three to ten years. What, what would be your piece of advice or input uh, that other African countries can learn from you and, and to make their particular geographies better? Mm. One, one, one of the learning is the, to invest on the uh, renewable energy. I, I've, I've realized that Africa has a huge potential in solar energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my advice. Take the step. Get it done. Don't wait too long. Don't wait for all the policy to be in place. Actively commission the pilots and let the pilots and the environment around that particular pilot plant inform the formulation of policy, etc. There's a good saying, you, you know, you can, you can have all the bells and whistles and uh, release a policy, but you have very, very little benefit from it. Or you can develop a policy only 40 or 50 percent of the way and you allow the market uh, to finish off the development of that policy so it's beneficial. So I think, I think that's uh, definitely what you're potentially referring to and, um, and it sounds as though you're in a very positive uh, process now to actually get that, get the dis that uh, discussion functional. Um, Alberto, uh, on your side, what, what, what yeah. would your recommendation be? Yeah, yeah. first, uh, um, going in the same way with my colleague, uh, I think uh, recently, uh, uh, two weeks, uh, our goals may be the African president they signed the, the agreement to open the market. I think it's so very important for us, this sector, energy sector, to have the common policy for me uh, to treat these uh, renewables energy. Because we saw there are some countries that are, are very developed and another country they are not developed and also the prices for the energy is so very, very, very different. I think we have to work together, yeah, we have to work together to discover opportunity together, especially in renewable energy because this is the way the hydro and the, the, all of them which is not renewable, it's not the future. It's a very interesting mm, yeah. perspective. Mm, yeah. And yes. one of the things that you mentioned now is, mm. is something um, that I think really needs to be discussed in detail. Mm. And it's about maybe taking a three or four country approach mm -hmm. to resolving energy poverty. Mm -hmm. And that may give you a lot of leverage in terms of investment. Mm -hmm. It will also give you a lot of negotiation power. Mm -hmm. And it will also give you ability mm -hmm. to think about the microgrids mm -hmm. and how you could strategically position microgrids and how those facilities could become beneficial mm -hmm. uh, from a distribution standpoint mm -hmm. uh, amongst themselves. Um, so very, very interesting line of thought that and uh, considering maybe a group, a group approach mm -hmm. um, and, and of course all the benefits associated mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. and of course we all know that there's economies in scale mm -hmm. and uh, the, larger, mm -hmm. the larger your approach, yeah, of course. Um, the mm -hmm. financial benefits, mm -hmm. your speed which you can implement mm -hmm. and of course the thinking around it, how you can make it uh, beneficial. Good. So sitting with uh, EDM this morning, a uh, very important perspective. Mm -hmm. And once again, very practical as well. It's something that's happening on the ground in Mozambique. Uh, there's been some great initiatives around the de development of renewable energy. Also some key, key aspects highlighting the inefficiencies from a regulatory standpoint. But nonetheless, uh, Rome is certainly no, wasn't, wasn't built in a day. And it's a very systematic and it's a very thorough process that needs to be followed. But one thing we rest assured of, uh, the thinking seems to be uh, very much aligned to a prog progressive way of thinking and it's certainly directly aligned uh, to some of the other sentiments that have been shared at Power and Electricity World Africa uh, over, the, over the last uh, one and a half days. Uh, for, so from our side, Gareth Gregory and our guests uh, Alberto uh, Banze uh, looking after distribution at EDM and uh, Benjamin uh, Fernandez uh, looking after the commercial side of EDM. It's been a great pleasure and a great privilege having you here and I look forward to catching up shortly on the progress and what has effectively been, be, been implemented. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.